today we're going on a walk to the lighthouse. I hope I'm okay in these shoes. Good morning. What are they doing over there? I don't know. They said they. I, I asked them what the schedule, and they said they're taking a picture. See, they're taking a the picture. And Ayla said, "Go away. We don't want you here." So then I walked away. <laughs> I'm breathing so heavily right now. <laughs> Can you just zoom in on her? No, I'm <laughs> Oh my god. I'm so scared somebody's gonna fall. I mean, we're surviving. Thanks, we let you all doing it too. They're afraid they're gonna die. I'm terrified. I can't. I don't understand why that was the scariest experience of my life. It was fun, but it looked a lot easier before we actually got yeah. to the rocks. <laughs> From now on, they're no longer my fellows. They're my liabilities. Um, and I think that's the most accurate way to describe what just happened <laughs> between Portland and this. <laughs> I'm okay. I just thought it was interesting Ayla didn't mention uh, the photo they took. That's what I was waiting to hear. Well, we were all over there and uh, Ayla wanted to take a planning committee photo. Um, but but I wasn't included. I'm, I'm being pushed off to the side like a wounded dog. Like if there was a little like a little puppy on the side of the road and you just didn't like it, that's me. So basically like, when I was walking, I was like, if I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna walk in style. Like I'm not gonna walk like scared of being falling in the rock. So I'm like shredding across, trying to get across because people are mad slow. I'm trying to like walk. Can you can you show us? Oh, this is like a little awkward. Okay. No, it's not. Show us. Bro, like, you're like walking like this. So if you walk like this, and then like you eat. Like you ate. Like you slayed. No, I respect it. Arturo, walking? what are your thoughts on this? I think he's a respectable young man. A very respectable, stylist, walking style. Very unique, very quirky. Who's that quirky. Oh, wait, this is not a So we just finished breakfast and now we're going to head into our first session of the day which is policy reform. So now there's a legal precedence that is set in place for the entire country that says you have a right to this information in your school. You have a right to do things even if your school doesn't like them. Is there anybody else who like anticipating resistance? Yeah. Um, wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's like... People try to make it a political issue, which really sucks, especially with like the Trump administration changing Title IX and the Biden administration trying to like, change that. We'll get into that because you do need facts to back it up, right? I'm Miwako. I'm 16 years old, and uh, I'm here to learn more about Title IX and changing the policy of my school because my school's founder had a sexual violence assault against him, and that really triggered a lot of like protests from alumni, and then uh, sexual violence really having a bad connotation at my school. Their most recent report was crisis level release from the first time in the history of since they've been taking this data. The CDC reported that they the highest rates of sexual violence reporting in the history since they've been taking this data. People were quoted as saying, not only do we have the highest rates of sexual violence in the history of taking this report that girls are reporting specifically, but we have the highest rates of suicidal ideation among girls in the history of our taking this information. And we are connecting those two things. We are telling you, as the CDC, who is the national, national leading authority, that those two issues are connected. We know that. So that's where you take it out of that political arena and you go, here are facts, this is the data. And this is why it's so important to meet, to do this work in schools. And that's where you make it about, not about a gender issue, not about a dating violence issue, but about a mental health issue. If we don't do this work in our school, then more students will be failing in mental health. My name is Shale Norris. I'm the founding executive director of Safe Bay. 
and I'm just here to work for all of these kids. Today I'm doing a presentation for all of our participants on how to reform your sexual misconduct policy to really help guide them through the process of working with their school board to reform their policies, put things in place so it's more trauma-informed and really easy to access for students who want to report their sexual assaults. Um, how are the, you going to make the reporting process for anyone in your school feel accessible, feel like they get a resolution, and not traumatize them, right? Investigations, by and large, are kind of difficult. You're like somebody you don't know and maybe don't even like, or maybe as a person of authority, is asking you all these personal questions to do this investigation. So you may really decide you don't want to do that investigation because that doesn't feel healthy for you. So are there things more in the restorative justice field that can help um, help you feel safer in school but not have to go into a deep investigation, right? There are alternative things. Ultimately, I think the thing that sets Safe Bay apart from other organizations is that no one's doing it like we do it. I think that there's still a lot of taboo in place and there's nowhere near enough support for youth leadership and empowerment, but ultimately being a survivor-founded organization but also a student-led organization sets us deeply apart because a lot of organizations out there that say that they're like youth-led or you don't actually put into power youth. They have like a youth advisory board or they consult with youth, but in actuality, they aren't putting kids in leadership. Right, I think we as a culture are like, people are bad, people are good. There's no in between, there's no gray. Guess what? You know perpetrators. You love perpetrators. My generation, holy shit, we were getting the worst messaging. My generation, perpetrators for days. Because we thought, Drinking was just how you got laid. Like, every movie we watched was get people drunk so you can get with them. So I think that helping people to understand the nuances, the difference, that you can go through the same experience with somebody, think you were in check and doing all the right things, and they had a horrible experience with that. Now you can say, I did not know that I did that. I did not mean to do that. And I'm so sorry I did that. Without being like, out here, like, you know what I mean? Don't you feel like there's so many times you see, like, there's two responses. Gaslight that person to say, I didn't do that, that didn't happen. Or just doubling down on, like, you're a liar, you're, like, and getting people to, like, I mean, I'm sure you've seen in school, right? In high school, this plays out big time, that it, it's, like, somebody it's accuses like somebody of something and people yeah. team up, right? But guess what? People that you like in your, I can't tell you how many times we see in the same friend group, one friend assaults another friend, and then the friend group is like, holy shit, who do we side with? And either you cancel the perpetrator, the accused perpetrator, or and, and you back up the survivor, because believe survivors, or you gaslight the survivor, cancel them, they get pushed out of school, they don't have any friends anymore, they don't even want to go to school there anymore. Neither one of those is a really ideal solution, because guess what? You cancel that perpetrator, what are they gonna do? Double down. I'm a piece of shit, I'm just gonna out here, be out here being a piece of shit. There's no rapist island. That's the truth. There's no rapist island. We don't get to say, you did a horrible thing, you're a bad person, put you on this island. That person still walks among us. So aren't we better off to serve survivors by saying, this is where you went wrong. This is how you can do it better. And by the way, if your friend is a perpetrator and you do, you know, you backing up that survivor, the best thing you can do as that friend is not to cancel them, not to not be friends with them anymore. It's to say, hey, I wasn't there. I don't know what happened, but something happened that impacted this other person, and we both care about that other person. So you need to take accountability for that. That's why we made this, because survivors were like, what do we do with the perpetrator? The policy reform section actually got me really excited to go back to school because um, at my school we have like we do have um, like a sexual violence policy but it's not it, it's definitely there so they can say that they have it it doesn't have consequences listed to the best of my knowledge and it's like very much in like legal language that no one understands and it's really unaccessible you have to like definitely like go down a rabbit hole looking for it my own school does it obey their own policy like we were sitting there and I pulled up my school district's website and I read through our policy and they don't follow it at all and I know multiple people in my school who have been sexually assaulted this year and my school said nothing about it so the policy reform session was really helpful in thinking about how I'm going to take that back to my school and confront my principal who is horrible so
I was in denial about my own sexual self for years, and if I can help other people come to terms with what happened and help them, I would love to do that. Before I was my second year, um, doing this presentation on centering the market, shifting the narrative. In 2013, with Know Your Nine, had engaged in what was originally called hashtag hands off time. Um, that is my name is Kenora Parm. I am the executive director of Any Rape on Campus and I facilitated a workshop around centering the margins, shifting the narrative, uh, and the importance around that workshop was to provide students with the understanding of what it means to truly center the margins, what that means to amplify and incorporate the voices of historically marginalized student survivors who are often left out of the national discourse when we talk about campus sexual violence. I feel like I've been on a journey of building systems that really pertain to women and girls and all of those folks who have the intersections of their identities to move through and navigate through life in ways that they may not necessarily have been able to. And at the time, there was no organization that was exclusively dedicated to supporting survivors of campus sexual violence. I think it's her point about um, the people being the most harmed, not being the ones being put in the position to be make the change was very powerful, and I thought that was really interesting. On a weekly basis to say, like, we've actually identified more protests that are happening across the United States. And so since May of 2021, they have been able to record a record of 406 um, student protests, um, rallies, vigils, or other kind of public gatherings that students from across the United States are gathering. Can your session on kind of talking about intersectionality, especially when we're talking about sexual violence and how we can stop it, was definitely one of the highlights of this entire institute for me because as someone who is Asian, as someone who that's such a big part of my identity, you can't just take that away from me when you're talking about certain issues and some serious things to, such as sexual violence. So talking about intersectionality has always been such a powerful point for me and Kenyora really brought that out to the um, spotlight by talking about genuine statistics like how black girls are six times more likely to get suspended than white girls. It's just also important to take note of when you're talking about serious topics. I just got back from lunch. Um, it was ass. Wait. <laughs> we That's just not got what you said. What's ass? I said the lighting's the ass. Lighting, the lighting, the <laughs> Um, sorry. Anyway, okay. Um, we just got back from lunch. Um, it was it was good. I had a little too much mac and cheese, but um, hopefully that passes the next five minutes because I have to go give my presentation about consent for kids. So I hope that goes well. I'm excited. If you would like to come watch with me. The man that needs no introduction. Stacy and I hadn't obviously practiced anything, and putting the slides together was a process that I, I took on 100%. Yeah, I, I love the PowerPoint. A few people were making fun of us using Canva, but that was Ayla's idea. I wanted to use Google Slides, but they liked the, the color scheme and everything, so it, it went well, and I had fun. Our topic that we're going to be discussing today is consent for kids, for children, young children, much younger than you. This particular topic means a lot to me, and... Um, my name is Stacey Samparini. Um, I, nobody knows me. Um, I'm not going to be on Team Theo or Team Leia. <laughs> um, we have been doing um, consent education for a really long time, and we watched the documentary, Audrey and Daisy, and we came back from one summer break, and I was no longer allowed to watch Netflix. <laughs> so, I feel that this topic is so important because there's so much that we're not doing in terms of empowering children um, to use their voice and then respect that they've used their voice. We're saying to them, you can say no thank you, but then we continually push things on top of them. Just shout it out. Where do we, where do we talk about consent? Where have you heard it? What do we talk about when we think about consent? Oh, she just asked if she could have a mic on the bird. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> That's valid. Excellent. What, what else? Relationships. Uh, photo releases. Photo releases. Very good. You like to like, Sorry, like touch someone or like do you like hug someone or like touch them? Or, like, In any way. Yeah. Any type of consent forms for like an officer? Is sex in there at all? No. But inherently, that's where our brain goes. Because we don't hear the word consent until now. And that's kind of like where we're going with today. Because inherently, it's not about sex. Consent is giving permission. You want to, somebody asks you for a gummy bear, that is consent, right? It's something as small as that. The fact that sex is about consent while consent is not about sex, that's the point that we were trying to um, elaborate and, and educate. And hopefully the attendees will bring some of that back to their schools and um, help, help their elementary school kids. Basically we just ski. Ski! But no snow. But like, don't put that in. Okay, okay, wait, wait. Are you gonna like pause it? Cause, yeah, I'm gonna pause it, then you're gonna, I'll put it on three. Alright, okay. I'm gonna okay, do the first so. word. Okay, Hold on. then go to the. No, it's not ready play. yet. Put it on three. Okay, one, two. Um, See, that's all. Yeah, yeah, uh, wait, where's the. Okay. Go to three? Zero point three? No, oh, just three. three. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Tell me when you're about to start it. Ready? I'm okay. starting. <laughs> That's the start. Okay. One of the first things I wanted to do is with a partner, I want us to kind of define, how would you define masculinity? I don't know how My name is Adam Howard. Um, I am a professor at Colby College. So my session is on, you know, how do you engage men in conversations about gender, sexuality, and uh, issues of consent and, and healthy kinds of forms of interacting with others and, and so forth. And so how do you, how do you involve men into, in that process? Typically kind of associated with men, uh, that it isn't connected to sex, uh, it isn't biological, it's actually a social construction. Uh, so it is one. Yep. Um, society's expectations of what a man should be. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, we said that like you can't identify like masculinity without like toxic stereotypes. Oh. When I go back to Central Catholic, I think my goal will be to engage men in the conversation any way that I can. I think that might be possible because my assistant principal told me he wanted to hear about the camp. I live in the D.C. metropolitan area, and one of the elite boy, all-boys schools that um, Professor Howard talked about was Georgetown Prep. I know people that go there. I know people that understand the pressures and stigma and societal standards of going to schools like that. And just like taking into account, again, intersectionality, all the race aspects of it, the class aspects of it, just um, Different like gender aspects of sexual violence are so important to take into account when having the conversation. Today's was definitely a lot more refreshing and like more motivating. Like the last one about consent for kids, I was just planning the entire time and taking notes. I was writing so much. Like, I want to email my boss because I'm a camp counselor, and I want to tell her all my ideas for like a day about like a consent day. Yes. We're already doing a kindness challenge where like we're keeping track of random kind of things kids are doing, and they're going to get a kindness award. Uh, my freshman year of high school is when I started um, my own anti sexual violence club in high school, and it was because um, the frequency of assaults is really high um, among staff, among students. And if I can get like. Um, parents on my side, I think I'm fine.
but obviously it's a big mall shop. Yeah. So if you have like an organization or community right. people, um, or all like helping you to achieve this like one, because it's a really big hole, right. which is like awesome, um, that might also be really helpful. Um, I wanted to do my school does this all meeting stuff where I wanted to like present because we present about different topics about like racial and like sometimes like about black history, Asian history, we do a lot of stuff like that. So I wanted to present like one of the slides that Safe Fate has. Like an assembly? Like that? Yeah. Okay. There's no sex ed class. Yeah. Like it is, there's no classroom experience. It's more like you're in a crowd with at least 2,000 people just mm -hmm. hearing one person that you can probably barely hear yeah. talk. Uh, you know, we don't have to like immediately make change and just like constantly at this stuff. Like we've been doing throughout the institute, we've had like fun times and we've had time to kind of relax because it's important for us all, and we've all heard the statement, like you can't pour from an empty cup because you need that time to recharge and to actually help learn and do things you enjoy while you're doing this activist work. Yeah, where are we going, Fort Knox? Fort Knox is in Texas. Where are we going, Fort Worth? Fort Worth. Still in Texas. Texas. <laughs> Still in Texas. Fort Williams. Fort Williams. Um, we're going to Fort Williams. I don't know what that is, uh, obviously, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, How can you look forward to it if you don't know what it is? Because I'm just a happy guy. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. I have nothing to not look forward to. I didn't mean to. But you did it, though. But no. I didn't mean to. But you did well, it. Why are you so dramatic? That eye, bro. You literally take your first together. Oh my gosh, that that first bite. Yeah. That's cute. And then let's go to the next. Look at my pants. First. I just picked your pants. I'm gonna stay. Alice in her heart. Literally. She spilled the drink on my like, pants. I was holding that, that, and that for, for him. And then he expected me. No, this, this is not for me specifically. Oh, Churro. Wait, let me see your pants. How much more? Yes! That was your payback. <laughs> oh, looks edible. No, it's good. No, those are good. These are so Maria, can I look? Look, why is there, the steak is supposed to be in the tacos. Why is it in the... No, it is not. You're supposed to put it yourself. No, bro. Clearly no, so. Look, no, what's on this? Ooh. Nothing. <laughs> this is I like that. <laughs> This is the town that we grew up in at different times, but these are the steps. Okay. So we just got to Fort Williams and we're showing the kids around in the lighthouse. They're pretty. I am absolutely vibing. Oh really nice. Good. Final thoughts on the Institute. 10 out of 10. Highly recommend. I know some people were asking, oh, can I come back next year? Um, that was a prompt no. <laughs> but I still would recommend the experience even though I can't come back next year. What do you think? Oh, is that all? Are you done with the side eye? <laughs> Review the Safe Face Summer Youth Activist Institute at 10 out of 10 because community has always been really important to me and just finding a new community of like-minded peers has been so refreshing. I'm so glad I got to meet people like Rory and people that are like really passionate about what we do with Safe Bay and also being able to you know create lifelong relationships and friendships. 11 out of 10. Very fun. It was a good mix of like activities with like presentations. I felt like there were so many presentations, and but it was like a lot of information, but it was like presented in a way where it was not like too much at once. I also feel like everyone's coming from like different like experience levels of activism, so it's just nice to come together. Yeah, and I also feel like it's really hard to like find people who are very interested in the same topic, so like coming here really gave me the opportunity to talk to people like with the same interest. Definitely 10 out of 10. Would recommend it. Um, I've had a lot of fun and I've met some really, really amazing people and I also learned a lot. Like, I think I have like six plus pages of notes, which is a lot. I'm not really a big note taker, so. I did, we did so much planning today for yeah. what we're gonna do when we leave. I feel so motivated to like 
be able to plan and plan through the summer because I know a lot of people say you lose motivation to do all these things over the mm -hmm. summer but this really empowered me and all of the things they taught us about policy change and also just every they taught us everything from the beginning to end okay. like where to start yeah and then like where to end and they gave so many tips and we got so many connections out of this oh my gosh so much yeah. help along the way uh, <clears throat> So, should I give a run now? Should I give a short? Should I give a cue? What should I do? I'm gonna give, I'm gonna talk, whatever. I'm gonna okay. Anyways, um, overall, I rate this experience like a, a really good 9 out of 10. I don't give 10s because nothing in this world is gonna be a 10 out of 10, if you really think about it. Um, only because I made a new friend. Look, <laughs> her name is Kathy. Okay, anyways. Oh. The Institute was so much fun, let me tell you, right? Cause like the first time I got here, I met Theo. He joined me from the airport, and like he was the most like funniest person to ride with. Cause we talked about those random things, and it was so funny. My overall <laughs> review, I, I could go so many directions with it. I had fun though. I enjoyed it. Um. And then when I got here, I met Bella, and like Bella and Theo type had beef, but it was kind of funny. I had a lot of fun, and I feel like I learned a lot from the sessions. Um, and I feel like the kids also did, even during like action planning and stuff. We kind of talked um, through each, what each kids wanted to do and the group like all helped them decide like the path that they want to take. My favorite thing I think would be, I just snotted everywhere. When I was coming in here, I was like, um, I don't know if I'm gonna like anybody, if I'm gonna talk to anybody, but the first time I walked in here, I was like, hi Cece. Me. I'm the excited. sessions are not what I expected. Like it was hard really to describe. Long. You just had to be there. It's been such a unique experience, and I just wouldn't be able to find it anywhere else. And I definitely recommend it to any other people interested. My favorite part is either meeting new friends that I know are going to be lifelong friends that I'm going to be keeping in touch with forever, and also the very informative sessions that just gave me unique, new point of views and perspectives on ideas that I thought I already knew, but I learned a new thing every day. My favorite part, I think, would be... So now I'm at all I'm thinking about to meeting everyone. Um, I think the kids had a great experience and I love serving them in a mentorship capacity and I think having the opportunity to offer some of my experience and expertise to young people who want to use it to do similar things in their own communities is really key to the movement. I think everyone's just feeling motivated. Wow, I'm losing my articulate abilities at the moment. Yeah, I learned a lot on these like three days. I met some great people and I had a lot of fun. And I've probably like laughed more on this trip than I have in like the last like three months. So that's been really great. I'm really grateful to have been on the planning committee and be able to like be a part of the experience. Um, going into Portland with like 22 kids was not my favorite experience. I still think my favorite part is just the action planning and like learning all the steps, the processes. Yeah, I think my favorite part was probably like learning everything like when it comes to like um, Title IX and everything because I didn't know none of that. Like walking in here, I was clueless. And the stock, of course. Uh, of course. I, cut. You know, um, we went, when we went like downtown, yes, was it downtown? Mm -hmm. Portland? Yesterday was really nice. I like the view. I didn't expect really to get to experience so much of Maine. I like. Maine. I thought we were just gonna do sessions, go home, and like just be bored. I thought I was gonna be bored, but I actually made a lot of friends. Maine. Really, I mean, true, but like you know. Guys, all the sessions were really like informative, and I like loved it so much. And the beach, the views were like beautiful. Like, let me tell you, like I definitely posted on my story that I was in Greece because how beautiful the shit they looked. <laughs> it was like mad funny. All right, so we have this TikTok idea. So no, we don't. Well, I have this TikTok idea. So we're gonna go do it right now. I okay. think it's gonna be brilliant. Okay. It's gonna be a masterpiece. Do you know everyone in school? So do you know everyone says about you? They say you're a homeschool general freak. They always have a version of me. Can I live one just yeah. a few more times? Wine. Wine. <laughs> oh. I don't know about that. <laughs> no, I'm fine. I don't need to actually say it. It's ah. Uh, do you know what they say about you? You're just a home. They say you're a homeschool. Short countdown. When you wanna go? Okay. Starting yeah, countdown. Starting countdown. <laughs> that was so good! I mean, I think you guys should start letting us come back because, you know, we just. Stay safe. Bye.
was good. That was good. Say, say, babe. Get it? It's funny. It's humor.